Recording in progress. So we will continue the chapter nine review and finish it today. Um, and we've done question one, two, three. So uh, let's uh, go where we left off. We have solved the first three problems and we were arrived at question four, which is similar to question 18 of your homework on chapter nine in Sapling. So if you have difficulties solving question 18 of homework nine, then watch, uh, you know, look at this, the solution for this one, and it should uh, show you uh, how to solve question 18. So here we need to consider this reaction of uh, NH3 gas plus HCl, a gas gives NH4Cl uh, solid. So NH3 is called ammonia, HCl is the hydrochloric acid. Notice how it's a gas. Well, yeah, so uh, it's actually hydrogen chloride because it's a gas. It would be hydrochloric acid if it was aqueous. But when it's the gas, it's called like a molecular compound. And so you name the first non-metal, hydrogen, and then uh, uh, hydrogen monochloride, actually. And then ammonium chloride is NH4Cl. So I will use the, the names instead of the um, formulas. Okay, so an excess of HCl reacts with 63.5 grams of ammonia. So ammonia is NH3, forming 145.5 grams of ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is NH4Cl. Calculate the percent yield of the reaction. Okay, so there is a formula for the percent yield. Let's uh, show this formula. And the formula is uh, actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100. That allows you to calculate the percent yield of the uh, reaction, which means, uh, you know, it, it gives you the percentage of what theoretically you should get, but in practice, we never get the full uh, theoretical uh, yield, we always get an actual yield that is less than the theoretical yield. And so that gives you the percentage of yield and, and you know, how efficient your uh, reaction was or not. So if we look at the text, it says an excess of HCl reacts with 63.5 grams of ammonia. So we see we have plenty of HCl and ammonia then will be the limiting reactant here because we only have 63.5 grams of ammonia. And they will form together 145.5 grams of ammonium chloride. So this is, uh, you know, in the lab, what you get, you measured your amount of product and you got 145.5 grams of ammonium chloride. So uh, let's say that the actual yield is the amount of product uh, actually formed, right? And so this number, the 145.5 grams of ammonium chloride, corresponds to your actual yield here. It's what you actually um, made of ammonium chloride. But we need to calculate how much we can make from uh, the um, amount of reactant we have on, of ammonia, right? So we will need to calculate the theoretical yield uh, by calculating how much product we can make from those 63.5 grams of ammonia. Because ammonia is the limiting reactant, right? It, we are told HCl is in excess. So ammonia is gonna completely react and limit the amount of product you can make. So it's then a regular um, stoichiometry calculation, you know, gram to gram, right? Because we need grams here. We have our actual yield in grams. So the concept map will look like this. Um, we have grams of ammonia, right? 63.5 grams of ammonia. We need to change that to moles of ammonia because we can change moles of ammonia to moles of ammonium chloride in units of moles, right? Using the uh, chemical equation above here, so, right? This relationship between ammonia and ammonium chloride is given in a number of molecules or moles. So, uh, and then we go back to grams of ammonium chloride because we need the mass of the product 
we can make from this 63.5 grams of ammonia. So for the first conversion factor, we need the molar mass of ammonia. So let's calculate that. We have, um, so let's look at the periodic table briefly here. Uh, hydrogen, uh, oops, sorry. Hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01 and then nitrogen has a molar mass of 14.01. So that's the numbers we need here. And we take one time the molar mass of nitrogen, so 14.01 gram, plus three times the molar mass of hydrogen, so three times 1.01 grams. Together, you add this together, and it's 17.04 grams per mole. As always, you know, your molar masses are given in with two decimal places, so you need to keep two decimal places because it's an addition. And so mathematically, I like to rewrite this mathematically. It's uh, one mole of NH3 ammonia is equal to 17.04 grams of ammonia. So we will need also the molar mass of ammonium chloride to do the last conversion of moles of ammonium chloride to grams. So let's uh, calculate the molar mass of uh, ammonium chloride. And so for this, we need uh, chlorine as well. So we need to add here 35.45 grams for the chlorine. And then we have uh, nitrogen and, and hydrogen the same. So we have one nitrogen, so one time 14.01 grams, four hydrogens, so four times 1.01 grams, and then one chlorine, so plus 35.45 grams of chlorine per mole. You add this all together and it's 53.50 grams per mole of ammonium chloride. Again, we keep two decimal places. And mathematically, this is written as one mole of ammonium chloride is equal to 53.50 grams of ammonium chloride. Um, so that gives us uh, the means to do those uh, two conversions, the last and the first here. And we need now to collect the information for changing moles of ammonia to moles of ammonium chloride. And for this, we need the, um, uh, the chemical equation here. And it says one mole of ammonia will make one mole of ammonium chloride. So let's write this. One mole of ammonia equals one mole of ammonium chloride. Uh, and that comes from the balance chemical equation, NH3 plus HCl gives NH4Cl, right? So we have our three equalities and, and we need three uh, conversion factors. So that's, that's all we need now. And we can start the calculation. The calculation will have the given amount as the you know, starting amount you will start your calculation with the given amount of 63.5 grams of ammonia. So write this in the numerator. Now, uh, the first uh, conversion factor, we need to cancel the units of grams of uh, ammonia. So we need grams of ammonia here on the bottom so that we can cancel grams of ammonia. And the first conversion factor here changes grams of ammonia to moles of ammonia. So we are using the molar mass. And so the grams of ammonia are 17.04 grams for one mole of ammonia. So you want um, the one mole of ammonia on top. Next, uh, the second conversion factor changes moles of ammonia to moles of ammonium chloride. And for this, we will use the conversion that comes from the chemical equation. And it's one mole of uh, ammonia makes one mole of ammonium chloride. So we can rewrite this. So one mole of NH3, we will put it on the bottom because we want to cancel the units of moles of NH3. So that's how we know where to put this one. And then on top, it's gonna be one mole of NH4, NH4, Cl, Cl. This changes the moles of ammonia to moles of ammonium chloride. 
And in the next step, we need to change the moles of ammonium chloride to grams of ammonium chloride. And for this, we will use the molar mass of ammonium chloride. And because we have you know, one mole of ammonium chloride here, we want to cancel the units of moles of ammonium chloride. So we will have them in the denominator for the next conversion factor. And so then on top, it's going to be 53.50 grams of uh, ammonium chloride. So that's the full um, um, you know, calculation. So it shows how we can sell the grams of ammonia, and then we can sell the moles of ammonia. And finally, we can sell the moles of NH4Cl, the units, right? We can sell those units. What's left are grams of NH4Cl, which is what we want. So in the calculator, you do 63.5. And the only numerator here uh, is 53.50. So multiply by that. And then divide by the only denominator worth typing here is 17.04. And the calculator answer is 100, 199.369, etc. And the unit is grams of NH4Cl. So we need to um, pay attention to the sig figs here. And as always, the, you know, the one moles here are uh, exact. So they don't limit the number of sig figs. We have four sig figs in each molar mass and three sig figs in the given amount. So we will keep three sig figs. So that means we keep the one, the nine, and the other nine. What comes after the last nine is a three, so we will just keep 199. You know, 199. Let me make this centered. Okay. So that's the uh, rounded value for the amount of ammonium chloride that would be um, produced if, you know, the, the reaction was 100% uh, complete and, and efficient. So uh, that's the theoretical yield, right? Remember that we were calculating the theoretical yield. And above here, we have the actual yield. So it looks like we have everything to uh, plug in into the uh, percent yield formula. So let's do that. Um, so here we are reminded of the formula. And so now let's plug in the values. Actual yield is 145.5 grams of you know, uh, ammonium chloride. On the bottom, it's 199, the theoretical yield, and we multiply by 100. So let's do this in the calculator. 145.5 divided by 199 multiplied by 100. And the calculator answer is 73.1155, etc. cetera, percent, right? The units of percent yield is percent. We need to simplify this uh, according to the number of sig figs. And uh, because of the given amount of 63.5 grams of ammonia here, we are limited to three sig figs on, on the theoretical yield here because we have four on top. So, and then the 100 is exact, right? Whenever you have 100 in a calculation to calculate a percent, the 100 is always exact. So we need to keep three sig figs from this. We keep the seven, the three, and the one. What comes after the one is a one. So we kept 73.1%. And that's the uh, final answer here for this uh, question four, right? Question four here. That is similar to question uh, 18 of the homework nine. So question five of chapter nine review uh, is similar to question 20 of the homework on chapter nine in Sapling. So if you have trouble with question 20 of homework nine, you know, look at this uh, problem five and it will help you. 
uh, see how to solve that question. So we have oxygen and xenon gases can be prepared by the reaction of xenon difluoride with water. So xenon difluoride, so one xenon to fluorine with water react to make xenon gas, oxygen gas, and then the hydro, well, the hydrogen monofluoride gas, HF. Again, if this was AQ here, uh, it would be the hydrofluoric acid, but as a gas, it's uh, hydrogen monofluoride gas. So a sample of 356 grams of xenon difluoride is mixed with 52.3 grams of water. So we have two different amounts for the two reactant. What is the limiting reactant? What is the theoretical yield of O2? And if the yield of the reaction is 79.6%, what is the actual yield of oxygen? So there are many questions here and we uh, will answer them in order. First, we will uh, decide what is the uh, limiting reactant and at the same time, this will solve the theoretical yield of O2. So let's focus on those two first questions. So what is given? And I like to show under the compound in the chemical equation, what we are given and what we are looking for. So here we're given 356 grams of xenon difluoride, 52 grams of water, and then we're looking for uh, the theoretical yield of water, which means uh, what mass of uh, uh, oxygen, oxygen, sorry, what mass of oxygen uh, we will get, right? So mass of oxygen there. So um, as you know, the the proportions in mass don't tell you anything about you know which one will be limiting because it could be uh, still uh, xenon difluoride even though you have a larger amount of it uh, it's the proportions in moles that matter so we need to convert those grams into moles and then uh, see how much oxygen we will get from those moles and then compare the amounts of oxygen uh, made from each of these amount separately. And then by comparing the amount of oxygen formed, we can uh, tell which one is the limiting reactant. So we will need to um, calculate the amount of oxygen that can be made from each of the reactant masses. So it's gonna be two separate calculations that assume that the other reactant is in excess. When you're doing, uh, for example, water, you will assume that you have enough of the xenon difluoride. And when you're doing uh, the xenon difluoride, you're assuming that you have enough of the water. So let's start with the xenon difluoride. And so the concept map will look like this. So of course, this is a gram to gram uh, stoichiometry calculation. Uh, you have first to convert the grams of the reactant to moles of that reactant. And then using the chemical equation, you change the moles of xenon difluoride to moles of oxygen, the product you want to know um, the mass you will make. And then from the moles, you go back to the grams of oxygen. So we need the molar mass of xenon difluoride. So let's see how we can calculate that. Let's look at the periodic table. Xenon difluoride, xenon here has a mass of 131.29 grams per mole. Fluorine, it's 19.00. So let's use those numbers. So 131.29 grams one time because we have only one xenon per formula plus two times 19.00 uh, because we have two fluorines, right? And you add this together and it's 169.29 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of xenon difluoride with two decimal places because the masses were given with two decimal places. Um, now we need the molar mass of oxygen for the last conversion factor here. 
Oxygen, um, hopefully you remember, it's 16.00 grams per mole. And because we have two oxygen per molecule of oxygen, we need to multiply that by two. And it's 32 grams per mole of oxygen, O2. And that's the first and the last conversion factors. And we need now the middle one, the mole to mole conversion factor that changes moles of xenon difluoride to moles of oxygen. And we can see here, two moles of xenon difluoride will produce one mole of oxygen. So we can write this. Two moles of xenon difluoride produce one mole of oxygen. So we have our three equalities, you know, that correspond to those three um, conversion factors here. So we can start the calculation. So uh, the amount we will start with here is uh, the 356 grams of xenon difluoride because that's uh, what we are starting with here. So you have this in the numerator, right? Remember the given amount is written in the numerator and then we will multiply by the first conversion factor. Because the given amount is grams of xenon difluoride, we want to cancel that unit and we want uh, this unit in the denominator of the first conversion factor. And that first conversion factor converts the grams of xenon difluoride to moles. So we will use the molar mass of xenon difluoride that says it's um, 169.29 grams of xenon fluoride for one mole of xenon difluoride. Right, so that's the molar mass with the moles on top, the grams on the bottom. So we can cancel units. Next, we need to change the moles of xenon difluoride to moles of oxygen. So we will use for this the equality that changes moles of xenon difluoride to moles of oxygen. And we want the moles of xenon difluoride on the denominator because we want to cancel units, right? So we want the two moles of xenon difluoride on the bottom and then the one mole of oxygen on top. So the uh, moles of xenon difluoride cancel. And we are left with moles of oxygen. So if for the next uh, conversion factor, we want to cancel moles of oxygen. So we will have them on the bottom of the next conversion factor. And the next conversion factor changes moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. So we use the molar mass of oxygen. And so that's for one mole. And it's 32.00 grams of oxygen for one mole of oxygen. So we can see this way that we are canceling all units, um, starting with um, here grams of xenon fluoride, difluoride, um, moles of xenon difluoride, and then finally we are canceling moles of oxygen, and we are left with grams of oxygen, which is what we want. So in the calculator, you do 356 grams and multiply by 32 grams of oxygen per mole divided by 169.29 and divided by two. Be careful, there is two denominators there. So divide again by two. The calculator answer is 33.6464, etc. So that's the calculator answer. We need to run this properly. And uh, as always, the mole, uh, you know, mole numbers are exact. So they do not limit the number of sig figs. We have four sig figs in the molar mass of oxygen, five sig figs in the molar mass of xenon difluoride, but only three sig figs in the given amount. So we need to keep three sig figs. We keep the three, 3.6. What comes after the six is a four, so we keep the six to six. So the um, rounded answer is 33.6 grams of oxygen that are produced from those 
356 grams of xenon difluoride. So that's uh, the amount of, of product made from that first uh, reactant. Now we need to do the second calculation that changes the grams of water to grams of oxygen. So let's do that. And we will be in the second page here. So um, we will uh, start with the concept map here. The concept map is that we start with grams of water, change them to moles of water. Then using the chemical equation coefficient, we change the moles of water to moles of oxygen. And then we go back to grams of oxygen using the molar mass of oxygen. So we will need the molar mass of water first. So water is made of two hydrogen atoms. So two times 1.01 grams and then one oxygen atom plus 16.00 grams. That's a total of 18.02 grams per mole of water. Uh, the uh, other molar mass we need is the molar mass of oxygen, and we already have it. That was calculated above, and it's 32 grams per mole of O2. Uh, the third conversion factor we will need is uh, the mole to mole conversion factor, and uh, we need to look at the chemical equation for that. And let's look here uh, between water and oxygen. Here it shows that two moles of water make one mole of oxygen. So it's going to look like this. Two moles of water equals one mole of oxygen. Again, the equal sign here means it's equivalent or produces. You should read this like this. So we have our three equalities and we can start the calculation. We'll start the calculation with the given amount of water, and that's 52.3 grams. So let's start with this, 52.3 grams of water. Uh, that's the given amount of water. And we will um, use the first conversion factor to change the grams of water to moles of water, and that's the molar mass for that. Because we have grams of water in the numerator, you know, we want to cancel that unit and have it in the denominator of the first conversion factor. And with the grams, it's the 18.02 grams of water that comes with it. So, and that's per mole of water. So that changes grams of water to moles of water. In the next step, we need to uh, cancel the units of moles of water. So we want the unit of moles of water in the denominator of the second conversion factor. And the second conversion factor changes the moles of water to moles of oxygen. So that's this equality here that we will use. And it says that two moles of water are producing one mole of oxygen. So that changes the moles of water to moles of oxygen. Next, we need to uh, change the moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. So we will use the molar mass of oxygen. And here, because we have moles of oxygen in the numerator, we want moles of oxygen in the denominator of the next conversion factor. And the molar mass is for one mole, so it's one mole here, and then 32.02. 0.00 grams of O2 is um, what we need on top here. Grams of O2, it's 32 uh, grams of O2 per moles of O2. We can see that uh, we can sell units uh, correctly here. So um, grams of water can sell first, then moles of water can sell. And finally, uh, moles of oxygen cancel. And we're left with grams of oxygen, which is what we want. So in the calculator, we do 52.3 times 
times 32.00, so that's all the numerators here. And then we'll divide by each denominator. So divided by 18.02 and divided again by two. The calculator answer is 46.437. Uh, two, nine, et cetera, so seven, three here. That's the calculator answer. We need to pay attention to sig fix. As always, the uh, mole numbers are exact, so they are not limiting. We have four sig figs in the molar mass of oxygen, four sig figs in the molar mass of water, three sig figs in the grams of water. So we need to keep three sig figs, the least amount. So we keep the four, the 6.4. What comes after the four is a three. So we will keep 46.4. And that's the uh, grams of oxygen produced from 52.3 grams of water, the uh, given amount of reactant uh, water. So now we need to compare this number with the one we got above. So 46.4 versus 33.6. So this uh, 33.6 is a smaller amount. So that means uh, the 356 grams of xenon difluoride uh, are limiting the amount of product you can make. So we can write this down. Uh, we can say that uh, xenon difluoride is the limiting reactant because you can only make 33.6 grams of oxygen from it versus 46.4 grams of oxygen from the initial mass of water of 52.3. So you can see how the difference in mass here was not indicative of the which one is the limiting reactant. And so that answer that question, you know, uh, uh, what was the limiting reactant? And then what we, with that came the question, what is the theoretical yield of water? Once you found the limiting reactant and found the amount you can make from this, that's your theoretical yield. That's the maximum amount you can make. So the theoretical yield is this amount uh, you can make from the limiting reactant and it's 33.6 grams of oxygen because that's the maximum amount you can make from the 356 grams of xenon difluoride. So that answered that uh, second question. And there was a third question. If the yield of the reaction is 79.6%, what is the actual yield of oxygen? So let's have it uh, written down below here. If the yield of the reaction is 79.6%, what is the actual yield of oxygen? So we know the um, theoretical yield of oxygen, right? We just said it's this amount, 33.6 grams. We know the percent yield of the reaction. So what is the actual yield? So for this, we will need to use the formula of the percent yield. Let's remind us what it is. The percent yield is the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100. We know the percent yield, we know the theoretical yield, and we are looking for the actual yield. So we need to isolate the actual yield or, or solve for the actual yield. So you can see here that if to, to have actual yield by itself, uh, we need to multiply both sides of the equal sign here uh, by theoretical yield, and then divide both sides by 100. This way, uh, on, the on the right side, theoretical yield we will cancel and the times 100 will cancel. So that means the actual yield is the percent yield times theoretical yield divided by 100. So that's the formula we want to use. And now we can plug in the values. So actual yield will be Let's plug in the values. Percent yield is 79.6. Uh, multiply by uh, theoretical yield is 33.6 grams of oxygen. And we need to divide all of that by 100. 100.
equals. So in the calculator, it's 79.6 times 33.6 divided by 100 equals. The calculator answer is 26.7456. And it's grams. Yeah, I should have used the, because this is, this was a percentage, but it, you know, over 100%. And that's grams, right? The theoretical yield have a unit of grams. So we end up with grams because the percentages cancel. That's the calculator answer. Uh, let's find out the uh, exact answer now. Uh, we need to keep three sig figs because of the percent yield and the theoretical yield. Uh, they all have three sig figs. And uh, as always, the 100 is an exact number. It does not limit here. So we need to keep the two, the six, and 0.7. What comes after the seven is a four. So we will keep the seven as seven, and it's grams of oxygen, because that's what the actual yield represents is the mass of oxygen that you actually uh, produced. And so that's that's the value here. And that answers the question number uh, five here. So question six, we'll stop at question six. Scientists have grown progressively more worried about the potential for global warming caused by increasing atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. The world burns the fossil fuel equivalent of approximately 9.0 times 10 to the 12 kilograms of petroleum per year. Assume that all this petroleum is in the form of octane, which is uh, C8H18, and calculate how much CO2 in kilograms is produced by world fossil fuel combustion per year. Because all this fossil, uh, fossil fuel, um, you know, uh, we burn them, so we do combustion reactions uh, to get the energy from them, and that's how we, uh, you know, Burning gasoline uh, makes us drive cars. Burning um, kerosene makes us uh, fly in planes. And burning uh, methane gas uh, allows you to warm your house and cook. And, you know, burning butane, propane can do the same. So all of these are fossil fuel that we are uh, using by burning them to get the energy from them. And whenever you burn uh, something that contains carbon and hydrogen, and even if it contains oxygen also, uh, when you burn them, you need to burn them in oxygen from the air. So you're consuming oxygen from the air and making carbon dioxide and water. So these are the two products that you are always making when you are burning uh, fossil fuels. And so here the chemical equation is given and it's, uh, you know, two, uh, octane uh, reacts with 25 molecules of oxygen to make 16 molecules of CO2, that's a gas, and 18 molecules of water as a gas because you're burning them. And so these uh, CO2 and water, both of them actually, are uh, contributing to the warming of the atmosphere around the, the Earth because these are what we call a, a green gas, uh, uh, yeah, green gas um, effect. So um, we have to answer this question here that says we are assuming we are burning 9.4, 10 to the 12 kilograms of petroleum per year. And we want to know how much CO2 uh, in kilograms we are producing this way per year. So that's per year. So we start with kilograms and we want to end with kilograms. So it's not just a gram to gram stoichiometric calculation here. You need first to change kilograms to grams. And then in the end, you need to convert uh, the grams to kilograms. So the concept map will be um, slightly longer because of that. Because we start with kilograms of octane here, right? Petroleum, we assume it's all octane. So 
We start with kilograms of octane, change them to grams because the molar masses are given in grams. So you need to go back to grams. Then using the molar mass of octane, you can ch change that to moles of octane. Then using the chemical equation, you change the moles of octane here to um, moles of CO2. And then using the molar mass of CO2, you change that to grams of CO2. And then the grams of CO2 to kilograms of CO2. Because the question is asking for CO2 in kilograms here. So we will need the molar mass of octane. And we have only carbon and hydrogen in octane. So we know these uh, molar masses uh, by heart. Well, first here, to be in order with the concept map, we need the fact that there is a thousand grams in one kilogram, right? Uh, the way you uh, get this is by, uh, you know, writing the, the prefixed unit with a one. So you set the prefixed unit with a one. And then you change the kilo here to its value. And kilo has a value of a thousand. And then you rewrite the base unit of grams. So that will allow us to change kilograms to grams here. And then in the end, grams to kilograms. So otherwise for the molar mass of octane, we do eight times the molar mass of carbon. So eight times 12.01 grams plus 18 times the molar mass of oxygen uh, of hydrogen, 1.01. You add this together and it's 114.26 grams per mole of, uh, of octane. And we need the molar mass of CO2 also because we need to convert the moles to grams there. So molar mass of CO2 is one time the molar mass of carbon plus two times the molar mass of oxygen. And that's 44.01 grams per mole of CO2. So that completes the last two steps and the first two steps. And we need now the moles of octane to moles of CO2 uh, equivalence. And this is given by the chemical equation, the balanced chemical equation. And it says here that two moles of octane will make 16 moles of, of CO2. So we can write this down, two moles of octane will produce 16 moles of CO2. So with that, we have all our equalities uh, that we need. So we will start the calculation with the given amount. And the given amount was 9.010 to the 12 kilograms of octane. So we assume petroleum is just octane. So the calculation will start with that. 9.12 grams of octane, right? So the first step is to change the kilograms to grams. So we will use this equality here. And because we have kilograms of octane in the numerator here, you know, in the given amount, we will write one kilogram of octane on the bottom here. And it's a thousand grams of octane on top. This way, kilograms of octane cancel and we've changed them to grams. In the next step, we change the grams of octane to moles of octane using the molar mass of octane. And because we have grams of octane in the, in the numerator of the first conversion factor, we want to have grams of octane in the denominator. And the grams here are 114.26 26 grams of octane per mole of octane. So that changes the grams of octane to moles of octane, that step. Next, we need to change the moles of octane to moles of CO2. And for this, we will use the equality that says two moles of octane produces 16 moles of CO2. And because we have uh, moles of octane here in the numerator of the previous conversion factor, so we need that same unit in the denominator of the next conversion factor. And what comes with it is two moles of octane are producing 16 moles of uh, CO2.
So that changes the mass of octane to mass of CO2. Next, we need to um, change the mass of CO2 to grams of CO2. So um, we will use the molar mass of CO2. And because we have mass of CO2 in the numerator here, um, in the previous conversion factor, we want to have mass of CO2 in the next conversion factor. Oops, and that's one mole here. And it was 44.01 grams. 44.01 grams of CO2. I'm gonna have to um, shorten my units to fit everything on one line because it's best that everything is in one line. Let's see if I can reduce this. Oops. Oh, no. Let me put this back here. Okay, I'm going to remove the units of octane there because uh, we need to shorten everything. Uh, the rest, it's uh, not easy to shorten. The last step is to change the grams of CO2 to kilograms of CO2 using the fact that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. And because we have grams here on the numerator, we want grams on the bottom. So the 1000 gram will be on the bottom. And that's for one kilogram on top. Um, let's see how we can shorten this. I don't know how much we can. Okay, so let me make this slightly smaller because it's best if it is in one line. Now I'll show you how we cancel units because that's what justifies the way we write this. So kilograms of octane cancels with kilograms. Then we have grams of octane cancel with grams of octane. Next, it's mars of octane, cancels with mars of octane. Um, after that, it's mars of CO2 that we can cancel. And finally, it's grams of CO2 that we can cancel and we obtain kilograms of CO2 in the end. That's the only uh, unit left, right? Everything else has canceled. So in the calculator, you do, and you will need to use the scientific notation here. So 9.0, the second function to get the EE key, you know, the EE function. So E, and then you just type the exponent 12. So the E stands for times 10 to the power. Multiply this by a thousand multiplied by 16 mars of CO2, multiplied by 44.01, divide by 114.26, divide again by two mars of octane, and divide again by a thousand. And the calculator answer is 2.773259. etc. times 10 to the 13 kilograms of CO2. So make sure you uh, pay attention to the fact that there is a times 10 to a power, and don't forget to uh, record it to type to you know re report it. So we need to um, pay attention to sig figs. We have two sig figs in the given amount. You know, the thousand over one kilogram, that's exact. All the mole numbers are exact. Uh, we have five sig figs in the mol molar mass of octane and four sig figs in the molar mass of CO2. So the only limiting, you know, the limiting amount is the two uh, sig figs from the given amount. So we need to keep the two, the seven. What comes after the seven is another seven. So we will need to round up to uh, eight. So it's going to be uh, 2.8 10 to the 13 kilograms of CO2 produced uh, per year. Because remember, this amount here was kilograms of petroleum uh, you know, burned per year. So that's the amount then uh, produced uh, per year. 
uh, amount of uh, carbon dioxide. And so that answers question six. And uh, we will not do question seven. So uh, you can do it if you want, but I will not um, cover it in this chapter review. And so that ends uh, the chapter nine review.